All right, so I just want to show you guys what I ended up doing here with regards to the, I guess you could call it a case, not really a case, like a wall shelving unit, if you will. So you can see I painted it gloss black, well, I at least tried, tried to. It turned out pretty nice. Now, the idea was I was going to actually house some Sega Genesis golf games on here, but uh, change of plans, and I'll explain in a minute as to why that is. Anyhow, so you can see here, uh, I have basically placed some black label Genesis loose carts on here, and I think it looks really nice. They fit really nice. It's a nice showpiece. Now, unfortunately, I've got uh, the jumbo video sticker on my flashback cart, but uh, what are you going to do? So, it, it, again, it looks really nice. I think it does. I could fit another cart right here, but it, it kind of looks out of place when I put a cart up there, so I think I'll just leave it like this. And so I've been meaning to expand my Sega Genesis collection anyways. I talked about it a couple of months ago. So by me filling up this wall unit with an additional eight carts, it allowed me to free up some space here. And I was able to put a lot of my EA Electronic Arts titles on this shelf here. So again, the reason why I ended up not going the route of the uh, the golf games on my new shelf, my new shelving unit, excuse me, I can't even talk. Unfortunately, EA carts, that size, that awkward size, it doesn't fit on the shelf. So what I was able to do is I'm gonna stick these EA carts on here like this. And it's fine because you can't really see the artwork on the carts when they're up on this shelving unit. Sorry, I'm gonna keep moving the camera around. So I've got enough room here for, uh, I guess, another cart right here. And I don't know, maybe we'll fill up some more carts down here. I'm not quite sure. But that's it. Uh, I just wanted to show you guys what was going on. I kind of cleaned up the the game units, if you will, the wall units. I've got a few black labeled cards up on here. A real nice showpiece, especially that one right there and that one right there. And then I've got the rest of the loose cards up on the wall here. So that's pretty much it. Uh, nothing crazy. I just wanted to show you guys my new setup. Let me know what you think about the new wall unit, and maybe I'll get something else that I can put up here. I don't know yet. Maybe I'll get like a, I don't know, a little action figure, Sega Genesis action figure. We'll see. We'll see what I can find online. So that's going to do it. That's it for the small update to the games room, the Sega Genesis room. So we're doing this freehand with the smartphone tonight, so I do apologize for the uh, amateur hour camera work, I guess we could say. So as you can see, I hit up a Howard's Pawn Shop. I was actually out of town a couple of days ago, and uh, when I went in there, I couldn't film because it was just the employee in there and one customer, and I just, I don't know, I didn't feel right about it. But the guy had, I kid you not, he, like he had Sega Genesis games, Atari 2600, PS3, PS2, lots and lots and lots and lots of games. But, uh, you know, when you get into this stage of collecting, such as myself, there's really not a lot out there that I don't already have as far as games I'm looking for. So it is very much a uh, picky, choosy affair right now. Uh, you know, you gotta sort of really, you spend a lot of time out in the wild to find Anything you're missing in your collection, uh, you know, shore up any loose ends. So it is, it can get rather difficult, I guess is what I'm trying to say, to find those last few games that you might be looking for in your collection. So 
But a lot of times I end up picking up games that I don't even really have on my radar. And this is a prime example here. So when I went in, the guy was really nice. He had kind of an East Coast accent. I don't know if he was from New Brunswick or Nova Scotia. Pretty laid back dude. And right away this caught my eye. Tokyo Extreme Racer Drift. Now there's quite a few entries into this series. I've always wanted to have this game. I've had a hard time finding it. Apparently it's a common game. I haven't seen it in the wild. There's also a Tokyo Extreme Racer Drift 2. And I think there's a third one as well, as well as a zero. But anyhow, the game actually looks really good. The graphics look really good. I know there's a huge emphasis on drifting. Not everyone's cup of tea, but I'm interested in playing this. Of course, Crave Software. And the guy looked at the disc, and I kid you not, he's like, oh, there's a couple of scratch marks on it. He's like, you know what? He's like, you can just have it. You can have it for free. He didn't ask me to buy anything else in the store. Of course, maybe he was trying to upsell me. I felt bad, so I picked up some other games as well. But yeah, he actually gave this to me for free, and the scratches aren't even that bad. So when I was walking around the store, I'm like, do you have any Genesis games? And he's like, oh yeah, come, come over here to, with me. And it was sort of behind the shelf, I didn't see it. He had a couple of Genesis games, nothing that really caught my eye. He had RBI Baseball complete in box. And he had this, Pac-Mania. Now when I saw this, I didn't even look at it to see that it was Pac-Mania. I thought it was Miss Pac-Man. And uh, basically he was asking, I think, six bucks for this? It's complete in box. So I'm not gonna say it's the greatest Pac-Man game in the world, but I mean, for six dollars, complete in box. This is gonna look nice on the shelf. I was very happy to have it. It's all about that hang tab. Very nice, very nice. And then I saw he had this one here as, w as well. Uh, Winter Challenge, now this is a ballistic game. So that's the main reason why I purchased it. Uh, I like to have a few ballistic games in the collection. I like the shape of the card, it's really cool. And uh, he's like, I'll tell you what, he's like, I'll give you these two, five a piece, two for 10. So I'm like, yeah, sure, fuck it. So again, obviously not the, the greatest game in the world, but uh, you know what? What I'll probably end up doing is I'll take that god awful casino game out of my collection and I'll replace it with this game. So no issues with that whatsoever. And the last game I picked up here, I thought it was interesting. I'm not gonna pretend this is a good game. I played it for about an hour and a half today. It's very awkward to pick up and play. It's got a real steep learning curve. It's Zebco Fishing. Now the cool thing about this, as you can see, it's a very long enlarged cart holding a AAA battery. That's because this has a rumble pack included. I didn't know. Apparently there's several Game Boy Color games that have a built-in rumble pack and it really actually adds a lot of entertainment to the game because when the fish bites on your lure, the rumble pack rumbles and that lets you know you gotta hook the fish and reel it in. So yeah, pretty cool. Very interesting, quirky, oddball, game to have in the collection and uh, yeah I think I paid six bucks for this so pretty cool uh, I don't know if you guys have seen any other or heard of any other Game Boy Color games that have the rumble pack I know there's some that have the uh, what is it called the gyro accelerometer uh, I know I've got a, a Kirby game that has one of those as well so interesting stuff nothing too crazy just a few pickups on the cheap there are deals to be had, you just gotta go out there and look for them. And I got one more thing I wanna show you guys, and we'll wrap up today's video. So I got a buddy of mine who uh, wishes to remain anonymous, subscriber of the channel, and uh, he reached out to me, he said, hey Cam, he's like, I got something that you need. And he, he wouldn't tell me what it was, so uh, anyhow, he ended up sending me a new mic, a Fafine. Now, unbeknownst to him, I had actually gone out and purchased the Yeti. Now, you might be wondering why do I need two mics? Well, obviously I don't, but now that I have the Fafine, I'm gonna take my time, I guess, to learn a little bit more about the microphone culture, if you will, and I'm gonna try to understand 
the pros and cons to each mic and then eventually I'd like to put out a review on both of these mics to conf let you guys know my honest opinion on which one I think is better. My buddy was telling me one of the issues with the Yeti is that the USB cable that plugs into the mic, it plugs into the bottom of the mic and uh, I don't know why I'm showing you the bottom of the box but uh, after a while if you pull it out and, and push it plug it back in and pull it out constantly eventually uh, the port for the USB can become loose in the Yeti. Now truth be told I only bought this because in Canada our options are limited when we go to the point of sale. When I went into Staples I think it was this is pretty much all they had. This and they had the uh, blue snowball I didn't like that microphone. But you know just looking at the mics here I haven't actually taken this one out of the box yet and, and fucked around with it too much. But I gotta say, this box, this box is absolutely fucking hideous looking. And th the name of the mic, Yeti. <laughs> this feels like something pristine. You've got Fafine, which is just fun to say. I love saying that word, Fafine. And uh, you've got a nice little thank you sticker on here. A nice, elegant looking box. You know, very sexy looking indeed so I don't know what it is about this Fafine but this has really piqued my interest so I'm going to take this out of the box tonight and I'm gonna hook it up I'm gonna play around with it and I'm gonna have some fun with this so I'm looking forward to using both of these mics and giving you guys my honest opinion I think the Fafine is uh, a lot more inexpensive than the, uh, the Yeti so you know if you're Looking for a new mic and you're on a budget, you might want to go with the Fafine. That's pretty much all I can say for now. I haven't really examined the mic too much, but that's what I'm going to do over the course of the next couple of days. I'm going to be in Toronto in a couple of days, and I'm going to try to maybe do some game hunting while I'm there. And I might bring this mic with me as well so I can take a closer look at it. So anyways, guys, that's going to do it for this video. Thanks so much for watching. Have a good night.